Hey, welcome back to the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. Today we have Mike Perry, and this is someone that I am extremely fascinated with. Uh, he's a polarizing figure in the MMA world, and I've wanted to talk to him for quite some time. Um, he's got a big fight coming up in less than a week, so I really appreciate him giving me the time to do this podcast right now. He's fighting Mickey Gall June 27th at the Apex. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Mike Perry, welcome to the show, buddy. Yo, what's up? I need a cool background like you, man. I need to set yeah. up a background for these uh, Skype interviews. You got a good background, man. You got like a nice painting on the wall. It's chilling. Uh, yeah. You know, keep it simple. But uh, what's up, man? It's cool to meet you. You got a, you got some pretty big moments in the UFC. I remember watching Mike Swick fights a little bit back in the day. And, and uh, I know T. Woodley messes with you. And God respect the champ. So... You know, with the old champ, whatever. Yeah, yeah, man, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, it was it was in the old days, man. I, I just turned forty one yesterday, so I'm feeling old, man. Really? Looking at you, looking at you at twenty eight, I'm like, damn, that was twenty four when I got in the UFC, and now I'm like forty one, and I'm like, fuck, I feel so old. I feel forty. You feel, I feel 50, man, so it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. not to not to like uh, bring a downer to you there, but it doesn't get any better. Um, yeah, we didn't choose the best job for longevity of health and body, I guess. So Yeah, I mean, that not, not necessarily true. You know, clean eating right now, drinking a lot of water, uh, in great shape, you know, preparation for a fight. I feel like if I just ate McDonald's all day, I wouldn't feel very good either. So yeah, I know you're right. You know, I it, sh I, sh I should have left the health good. part out because uh, you know, obviously we are very healthy. We have to be very health healthy to be at, at the well as I used to be as you are now at the level that you're at as an athlete. And then with the USADA and testing and the medical testing and everything, you at least know you're a healthy individual. You got brain scans, you got EKGs, you got blood work, you got, you know, so it's like you are really healthy when you're, when you're an MMA fighter, they, they test everything. So I guess I take the health part back, but the strain on the body definitely adds up over the years. And, uh, but you know what I've noticed is, for me, just, just some little advice for you since you're younger and you're going to get to my age one day, long time from now. But uh, if you stay strong, you, you feel good, man. But like this quarantine, I wasn't able to train as much as I, I had been training before the quarantine. I was in really good shape with, with Tyron. Tyron came up here and we were training really hard and I was in good shape. And the quarantine hit and I had to focus on business and, and what we're doing next. And I didn't get a chance to train very much. Um, and that's when I started, my body started breaking down. It's like those muscles that we have, the strength holds our bodies together. Like a lot of the like, uh, joints and the vertebrae, all these things that are messed up from all these years of fighting, they get held together by those muscles. So like when I quit training and I get weaker, that's when I get the most pain and the most like problems. So like now I'm on that like quest to get back into shape fast as I can so that I can not have this back pain and this neck pain and these elbow, you know, problems and stuff like that so it's kind of like as long as you stay training man you're good it's just when you stop that's kind of when the problem is i feel i like i disagree i uh i have been resting and you know i could get up off the couch and beat beat the hell out of somebody cause, just because my body <laughs> feels so good from yeah. all the let, laying down that i've done and uh you know when you're training three times a day and you just when you wake up the next day and you're like, there was a long time I was like, man, I'm sore. So I was excited about going to work out while I was already some type of sore, but I wasn't getting the maximum out of my performance that when I'm rested, like I can go in the gym and just pick up all this weight and, or just uh, go spar. And when, when you, when you go in three times a day, your mind starts thinking about, because that's all you're doing is thinking about it and thinking about it. So then you start throwing in all these options and yeah. then you you just get lost in that. And if you just rest and take time, well, this maybe when you take time too, so like time inside of time, right? When you choose to take time to yourself is important as well. There was a time when I needed to work out three times a day, and that built my body up to this, this muscle memory that it's not going to forget. I know what it's like to work out for two and a half hours, 
but we fight for 15 minutes. I need to go in the gym and I need to do, I need to fight for 20 to 25 minutes. And, um, you know, or maybe you do a couple stretches, five or 10 minutes, it's just some light shit. And then 15, 20 minutes, you have a fight with a, a couple fresh guys, you know what I mean? Because that's what it's going to be like in there. And, you know, you just try to keep your mind relaxed. And this is what all I've been working on because it's all in the mind, bro. Cardio. I know I got cardio. I could, I could gas myself out at any given time uh, if I just push my load too hard. But you got to turn it on, then you got to slow it down. Then you got to turn it on, then you got to slow it down. So uh, really just enjoying my life, uh, you know, not – I used to be so crazy about like, oh, man, I got – I can't eat bacon. I got I got this fight coming up. I'm going to watch the alcohol. I'm going to watch. And, and like, as I go through life and I smoke vapes or weed or, or like, um, I, I have a little sip of alcohol. That's like medicine. It can be if you use it right. Yeah. So to get my mind in the most comfortable place, I have to be happy with my life. Yeah. And... I'm not going to sit here and keep suffering because I know I can fight. And I'm not just going to see how much pain and suffering I can take. Now I'm going to see, you know, like like the Yoel Romero versus Adesanya fight really did a lot to me. It's like, how good are you at fighting? Can you go out there and can you just stand there mm -hmm. and then be ready for whatever comes your way? Yeah. I know that went kind of crazy, but like that's no, what I, I get think it. about. I'm ready to fight. You know, to fight with Mickey Gall is next week. It's gonna be a good one. Yeah, and I get it. And I think another big thing, though, going back a little bit to what we were just talking about, is you guys now are training so much smarter. Like you understand, I came from the old school, like. You know, we were the feeder. You know, we were like the, the AK, the old school AK, old school Militich. We train hard, man. So, so we beat the shit out of our bodies, overtraining. You know, doing stuff, um, and that was tough. That was super tough, man. So that that that's where that wear and tear uh, caught up to us, and 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 really uh, took a toll on our body, which kind of injured. I got more injured in training than I did in fighting. So I agree with you now, and and AK is doing it now, and everybody's you know, we've everyone's evolved in, in in the training program, um, and they're training a little bit smarter. You know, back in the old days, you know, it was it was tough, man. It was it was a new sport, you know, and it was fighting, and so it's like you assume if, if you want to be the best at fighting, you got to fight, and, and we would go in there and we would just fight every day, and and it was some crazy training, crazy injuries, crazy whatever. I mean, um, not go in the gym every day and fight. But, like, once a week, you have a badass fight, and then the rest, you know, you work. Obviously, every time you wrestle, it's a fight. Yeah. So you're going, you're wrestling against pro fighters in your gym. And, like, I think that's important to to have those days and the, where you can fight guys. And most of the time, especially with a hard hitter, bro, I got to pay. I'm going to have to pay sparring partners or something. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah. Nobody wants that. Nobody really wants to go there. But, or, or most of the time, the way I see it is it's okay to hit me, but it's never okay when I fucking hit them back. And they always start crying and complaining and shit. Yeah. And I need to do jump switch knees. And I need to, you know, you need to do the, the moves. Like, I was watching Yair Rodriguez highlights yesterday. I'm like, how, who's he sparring with? He's practicing these, fuck, these backflip kicks. Who's he practicing these on? You know yeah. what I mean? And so the old school way, I'm kind of old school too. I'm one of the, I'm, I'm a millennial. So I'm like, I was raised in the old school ways. I used to go to people's house and knock on the door and not call them on the phone. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and now I'm kind of coming in. I see the millennials and shit. And, and like, even... I don't know if you saw the Ariel Helwani thing, the the fights uh, last night yeah. where he was saying he was furious with the coach trying to push the guy. Yeah, it's Drysdale, the guy you're talking about when he was going to quit, right? Coaches. Yeah, and yeah. like, okay, the corner man took the corner time to try to push his fighter. That was actually pretty good coaching. He was like, hey, man, you can do it. I believe in you. You know what I mean? That's what they need at times like that. And at the end of the day, the guy came over and the coach was like, ah, he doesn't want to do it. He wants to call it. I think he so actually quit, yeah. So what can you really be mad about? They just making drama out of it. And 
because you know who doesn't love drama yeah i know i'm going deep with it right now i guess you know how this is it's good to talk to a high level guy about about things that I'm sure you've thought about. You know what I mean? It's hard to um, hold that confidence that you can have sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, I know I've been thinking about, man, when I'm out at night sometimes and I'm drunk, I feel invisible. And I feel like if Everybody I could does. go in there with that, <laughs> I'd be unstoppable. Yeah. But then you go so clean. Right, you clean eating everything, no bad stuff in your body at all. And when you're used to living a regular life, and then you do that to yourself, it makes your nervous system just so twitchy, and and it's really hard to to calm it down without a little help. You know what I mean? I mean, they talk about old fighters like um, I don't know if it was Roberto Duran or Chavez. They used to take shots of tequila before they go out and fight. Shit. I said it the other day on Twitter. I, if I could just have a little champagne flute right before I walk out there, you know? <laughs> That's crazy, man. So we'd be putting on some superhuman fights. It's not steroids. Yeah, I don't know how alcohol. that would work, man. I'm, I don't do good with alcohol, so I don't know. But I know that confidence. I, I know what you're talking about, the confidence. Everybody thinks they're though. a UFC fighter when they have a couple of drinks. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, I want to be I want to be the drunken master, though. Yeah. Well, so so you fight, you're, you're fighting coming up against uh, Mickey Gall coming up on the 27th. So that's uh, that's less than a week, man. That's like uh, just, just a few, uh, almost a week from now. Um, do you have any beef against uh, Gall, or is it just just work for you? I know you said it was an easy opponent, but uh, is it, is there any beef really? Is he coming back with anything, or are you just going to go out there and just fight, and it's kind of like uh, just a normal fight for you? Well, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to stand there. Yeah, I think and I'm going to make him. I'm going to make him fight me, and um, you know he's going to run, or if he comes in with punches, he's going to get clipped. My boxing is way better. If, I'm sure he's going to try to take me down at some time because um, he come out and shot on CM Punk so fast. But then when he fought Diego, he couldn't shoot in Diego at all. And Diego with the body clinch was just ragdolling him. And I'm so mean at that body clinch. So I don't see him having success anywhere. Um, I'm just going to stand there and wait for him to run into my hands and he's going to go to sleep. And um, you had another part to that question. What was it? Now, I was just wondering if you had any beef it with was, him, too, uh, or if it was just business. Like There, oh, there hasn't man, been any... Oh, man, the beef. See, I, that totally slipped my mind. I'm just saying, like, I, haven't, I haven't heard any like trash talking between you guys. So I, this is kind of a, a fight where I just feel like you're kind of just going in there. You don't have a lot of beef, but you're just going to take care of business for yourself, get the big win, get the big knockout. Well, I talk a little trash, right? And because a year ago, on like Thanksgiving... Or like a little over a year ago. Maybe it was. I know he called me out a couple times in the past. And I know there was like a time on Thanksgiving. He was. He made a video on Instagram. And he was just like. Oh yeah for Thanksgiving. Mike Perry fucking sucks. And blah blah blah. And he was like hating on me so hard. And I was like who is this kid bro. And now. Now that the shit is about to happen. You go watch his interviews. He's like, I'm a low-key Mike Perry fan. And, you know, I just, well, motherfucker, I'm not playing with you. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to stand there mad as fuck, too. That's the thing is that you take that anger and you just go run forward and you try to get them too fast. Then you run into shit. But if you go out there and you just let that anger sit, it's kinetic energy, and then you can let it rip. When they come in too close, bro, this kid don't stand a chance. So, so how is it with training, man? Because I heard that you made a couple comments here about not training with uh, many people or not having coaches in your corner. You're gonna have your girlfriend um, in your corner, Lato Latori. Is her name? Yeah. Your girlfriend. So, so are Sorry. you are uh, you gonna are you training with anybody? Is it, and if you aren't, is it because of the quarantine or are you just kind of like doing your own thing for this fight in general? Um, you know what, man, I have. There's a couple guys out here and a couple gyms that, uh, um, like one, you know, I just get some, I go get some heavy bag work and uh, I make sure my stuff's uh, flowing good and uh, do some abs and 
you know, uh, stretching. I've done some jujitsu with, uh, in some classes or whatever um, with some guys, but I pay for these gyms, you know what I mean? And Or I got a couple uh, dudes that I met in Albuquerque a while back, these two twin brothers, and um, they have a gym that they can go to 24-7, and it's like a wrestling gym or whatever. And I go and I'll just – drill with them and they want to learn from me too they're such hum humble dudes and they they love the sport of fighting and so they just listen and i'm coaching the setups you know what i mean of how i see the fight gonna go i got a couple of bodies and they're kind of similar to mickey gall before i ever even knew the mickey gall fight was coming and then um, so I'll just set some things up. We'll do some combinations. He'll do them back. I'll work the offenses and the defenses. And then I'll say, okay, at some point the shot's going to come in. And then we'll work. Um, it's like live drilling, you know, yeah. I'm sure you know. And and it's all a – there's no ego from anybody but me. My ego is the only ego that matters when I go in there. And so now I'm not waiting for coaches that I'm, – I'm, I'm I'm saying what it's going to be and how it's going to be, and I'm working the moves as we go through them. And these guys are just along for it. They're with it, and they're not trying to say, "Oh, you should try this. Oh, you should try this. Oh, you should no." Shh. You know what I mean? So they're not doing that. And um, yeah, so yeah, I've worked with a couple of guys, but it's it's a good balance between I drill a couple of things the way I want to see it. Uh, I work on my own on the heavy bag or I go get some road work. Um, I'm eating, I'm drinking water. No one's going to tell me don't have some peanut butter toast or something mm -hmm. like, um, and, and, uh, I'm with the person that, you know, I'm happy to be with. My mind's going to be in a, in a real good place. I've been resting a lot. So I'll train a little, I'll rest a little, and then I'll and I'll mix it up. I haven't necessarily been in a pool. A pool would have been nice to get some swimming laps. But, you know, I've gotten some jujitsu, some wrestling, some full MMA, some kickboxing, some boxing. I've gotten, um, you know, that road work is important. I get out there and go. There's a track like a block away from my crib right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm just... I'm I'm gonna put it as like you ain't gonna take my life from me, right? But I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna stand there with that attitude. Yeah, that makes sense, man. So, so I mean, so so you really aren't gonna have coaches in your corner, though. No, I don't. I don't feel like I've ever heard anything useful with guys in the corner. Anyways, the only thing I can think that might have been useful is a distraction from when like. My debut, a corner that I had that I never had again, he just kept screaming the same shit. And when I watched the fight and I told him, I was like, bro, it's so annoying listening to you say, oh, all the way in, all the way out. <laughs> and he's screaming it, get in, stay in. And I'm like, no, I'm bouncing in and out good. And then, you know, I hear him say, like, this so I get on top crucifix and I go elbow elbow and then you hear the corner go elbow elbow like yeah you just telling me what I just did you know what I mean <laughs> I get I could do it two more times but I got that already yeah so I've never had anything useful be said to me in the corner and to be honest just y'all just be quiet watch the show you get a front row seat and I'm going to listen to his corner. And then in the apex, people are hearing Daniel Cormier, the commentators. I'm interested to see how that's going to be. Just a day at training. I'm going to start talking some shit in there. I'm going to try to relax and have a conversation with a couple of people. You may you may hear some good cornering from those guys. You may hear some you good advice I mean? from Daniel Cormier. And, and Daniel Cormier or <laughs> listen to them. there. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I don't need nothing, bro. I just need my girl and put the gloves on. I don't even need gloves. I would, we could do bare knuckle, and it ain't gonna be boxing. If 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 I do some valet tudo death fighting, I'm putting my fingers in people's eyes. 
<laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. That's crazy. So uh, you're a fascinating guy, man. It's, 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 I'm, a, I'm a fan of your fighting and, you. and, and your personality and your, your charisma. And this is just one more element that's going to be interesting to see. You go out there and I've never seen somebody go out there and just fight like that. So and, and I think with your style, it's going to it's going to be fine. You know, you go out there and you fight the same I mean, you have that mentality. You go out there and you fight and, and it's kind of the same. You know, I mean, it's, it's I'm not saying you, that you don't change, but I'm just saying that your mentality and how you fight is just you, you know? So, I mean, it, it is like, uh, yeah. I see it working. I see it working for you. It's been me since I was a young kid. I feel like I've always had this physique. I've always had the athleticism and these physical abilities. Um, I feel like I've taught the coaches that I've had much more than they ever taught me because for, I'm hard-headed anyways. I don't listen to nobody until I see it for myself and then I teach myself. So like you said about me, changing a little yes i've grown up and i've learned the sport more i i took a different road than other fighters have taken in the past and that doesn't mean that i can't be the best still i feel like this is a fresh start for me i'm six and six in the ufc and four of the six that i lost were great fights and i got caught by a couple really good fighters who were very high level and I was going to do the same thing to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it was who caught who first. And and uh, those usually happen early. I've had two first-round losses that, okay, I got caught by some better fighters. And now I'm going to go out there and I'm going to stop rushing it. I'm going to just stand there. And I don't think anybody's going to take anything from me And I'll, if I'm just standing my ground. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Black Lives Matter. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, so it's maybe a stupid question, but I don't guess the apex with no audience is going to be a big deal for you either, as far as going out there and, and not having an audience. I mean, obviously we're talking about the coaches and here and them, but just the not having the crowd and stuff like that. I know you love kind of like feeling that crowd and that 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 energy, but I, I don't think it's going to make a big difference for someone like you, man, to go out there and just fight just just the same as if if there's twenty thousand people there. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the the 20,000 people is more of a distraction. They be yelling bad things at me when I come in the ring. They say <laughs> some stuff that I hear, and I'm like, man, right before I walk in. So, you know, and I've had things in the past that that you think you're ready for everything, and then you, something happens that throws you off. Like, for example, my last fight, they didn't play my walkout song my 12th UFC fight, and they've never done that. And I thought I was ready for everything. And then I had the guy who wrote the song in the crowd, and it was a song about me. And then they didn't play it, and I was walking out, and I was trying to hear it, and then I was thinking about this shit before I went in there. So to be able to just walk to a, to a quiet room in a ring, get in, it's like training. I'm sure both of us are going to be in a more comfortable position to put on a better fight i feel like a lot of fighters have been doing better because the people ain't just screaming vulgarities at them but don't get me wrong i can't wait to do it in front of twenty thousand people again yeah of and course i'm just getting smarter so i'll be ready for anything they throw at me and even the things that i can't even think of I'll be ready for them because there's nothing to do but one and two. And I'm a fucking, I'm going to just stand there and you ain't going to take nothing from me, bro. I feel you, man. And, you know, a lot of people talk about this type of stuff, getting ready for a fight. But, you know, I'm really curious, man. Like when you were growing up, you grew up in uh, Michigan, correct? Yeah. So what what was it that got you into martial arts in the first place? And then, and then when you got into martial arts and started training in some facet of martial arts, what was it that made you decide this is kind of what you want to do uh, professionally and, and do it as a career? Man, you know, I just, I was an aggressive kid. I love playing sports outside every day, playing basketball, football, uh, playing sports for school. And then I saw Bodog on TV one day, uh, and it was... It was, um, what's his name? Conor McGregor beat him for the 155-pound title. Eddie Bravo. Alvarez. It's not Bravo. It's, it's what? Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez, yeah. Yeah. That's who I saw. And this was so many years ago, and that guy's still fighting. Yeah. And 
he was getting dropped back then, and then he won the fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Eddie Alvarez and, and Bodog, I saw it on TV. My dad was watching it. And then I was just like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I started, like, wrestling kids in the neighborhood and and putting boxing gloves on, and, uh, you know, just – I was just a wild-ass kid. That's crazy, man. And and then you got – and then how, how did you find out about professional fighting? Like, when, when did that approach come to you where someone offered you a fight for money like or, or for uh, maybe amateur or pro MMA? Well, I – I did boxing first. I did amateur boxing first. I mean, I had trained off of YouTube and stuff. Off I, YouTube? I saw Jorge Masvidal back in the day yeah. uh, doing the backyard bare knuckle. With Kimbo. And we used to, we used to set stuff up, uh, stuff up after school and, and do matches after school. And, um, you know, uh, I watched some of you and, shoot, some of uh, T. Wood back in the day, Invicta, or not Invicta, was it? Yeah. And Randy Couture, I mean, I just, all the, um, I just watched fighting. And I knew at a young age, bro, at like 11, I was, that was when I had saw that Bulldog. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do with my life. I was yeah. like, I'm going to work out. I was always doing push-ups in the room. I was like 10 years old, and I was in the room on a handstand with my feet on the wall. And I would do 50 handstand push-ups, bro. I'd do 100 push-ups. I'd do 50 sit-ups every day. Uh, I hate abs, but, you yeah. know, I still did some. And then I rode my bike around the neighborhood 20 miles a day. I was always active playing sports. So I knew. I knew what I wanted to do. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. What was your big break to get in the UFC? Like, like what, what happened that, that made that final uh, step for you to, to join the UFC and, and have your first fight there? Shoot, I knocked a bunch of people out. They couldn't they they couldn't touch me. I mean, so they contacted you in pro boxing. What's that? So they contacted you after like you had a couple of fights and then you heard from them or did you do you have a management that did it or? Um, I and I had met. So I was like uh, five and zero, oh, and I went and I fought um, at Island Fights, which is a Roy Jones Jr. promotion. And I knocked this dude out in the first round, and then we were hanging out at the bar after. And that's when I met Abraham Kawa, and he was with Yoel Romero. And I asked Yoel, I was like, man, you trust this guy? He was like, with my life. And, like, I didn't understand it back then, but, I mean, Abe's a great manager. Uh, I understand it now, you know what I mean? I like I like to pay that guy because he just sets me up with so many good opportunities and um, he takes care of me like, I, you know, just he's got nothing but good things to say. And, and he's um, but so I beat the guy. I met Abe and Yoel and then um, something came through on Facebook. I, I had one more fight and I beat this kid, David Mundell. We, we had a crazy fight as amateurs, and then I fought him as a pro when I was 6-0, and and I knocked his ass out, too. So I was 7-0 and with seven knockouts, and then something came through 
they said, oh, in two weeks, Hung Yu Lim, this guy needs an opponent. And I sent it to Abe. And the Abe called back and said, we got it. And I showed up. A couple weeks later, man, the rest is history, you know. Yeah. And I've had some lessons. I've had some ups and downs. The thing is, I feel like I accomplished all my goals very early. Yeah. Like, probably by the the Ellenberger knockout. And then I was going to fight Tiago Alves, and that was going to be huge for me. I was excited, but then he didn't make it. So I ended up getting this. I ended up getting Dominic Reyes' his little brother, and I, I beat him quick. And then I had done everything I had wanted to do. And I kind of ran out of ideas. I always had ideas going into the fights, like the elbow with Ellenberger. I said yeah, it was a massive, gonna massive elbow. Um, and then I had ideas of things I wanted to say on the mic after. And then I ran out of things to say. I didn't want. I was done talking to people. People was just. There was always going to be some nasty hater somewhere, no matter how good I was, no matter what I did, and. And that I let that get to me for a little bit instead of just, you know, remembering that, okay, let them hate. I got to do me at the end of the day. I'm getting in there, not them. I can't let that affect me. Yeah. And I did. I let stuff affect me. So now it's like I'm going to come back with a clean slate. It's like how I always thought it was. I got my beautiful girlfriend with me. I'm going to show her how badass I am. I'm going to get in this cage. I'm like, watch what I do to this motherfucker. I'm going to be talking to her while I beat the brakes off of Mickey Gall next week. <laughs> if he shows up, if he makes it to the fight, I'll be ready for anybody. So, you know, I'm ready, bro. I can see I can, I can see how that could be motivating to have your girl in the corner, man, because I've been watching your Instagram, and, and you seem like y'all are a great couple, man. So it seems like there's a lot of probably – energy that feeds back and forth between you two and and that could be useful in a fight you know when you're going back uh, if you have a second round third round or something and, and and might need some of that energy so it's gonna be interesting to see it hey i figured if anything worst case scenario she's here to piss me off fucking two minutes right before i walk out to go <laughs> fight this dude we're gonna be in the corner and i'm gonna get so mad at her and i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna take it out on him <laughs> that's crazy man that's great. Speaking of being mad, I got I to gotta ask you, though, because uh, Darren Till still is on it. He's still on this thing with you. Like, it, is this going to end with you and Darren, or is it going to just keep going? It seems like he's still I trying like to... to fight his fat ass. It uh, seems like he uh, spends a lot of time it. trolling you, though. Like, it's, I don't know why how, or how he has so much time to, to troll you, but he really made a point in his life to, like, get under your skin for some reason, even though he's in middleweight now. Well, he wants me to go up. He thinks if, if I go up to to 185 he'll have an easy day but i'll be too fast for his fat ass i'll piece his ass up just like i did when we sparred i hit him with six seven eight punch combinations once i get inside of that reach and boop, 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 boop. my boxing is too good i remember him having fat heavy hips and my jujitsu has gotten a lot better since then and um you know I got some of the best boxing in the UFC. I know I do. And especially, you know, because I can put it all together. Obviously, I'd have to train more boxing if I was going into a boxing fight. I mean, I just got to stick and move and shit. And when I got beat in a pro boxing fight, it was like I was so young and stiff and like, ugh. But now I don't care. So it's just... I'm relaxed and I'm out there and I'm looking to hit you and not get hit by you. And I can beat anybody like that. I don't care what size you are. I hit like a heavyweight. And I mean, I don't even, bro, I don't even want to give that dude the time of day until we can make it happen. Because everybody's like, oh, why you block him? Or, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm scared of him. I'm like, no, see, the thing is, I'm scared of myself. And you want to play with me over the Internet? Because you would never say these things to me to my face. Nobody would. Nobody could. Because I would fucking do something about it. I don't care who you are. How I don't give a fuck, bro. 
Nobody's going to play with me in my life like that in my life. Social media is not real time. So you want to fucking play and I'm not going to forget about it. If I can get my, if I can see this motherfucker in the street, I will do it for free. If we are ever in the same place at the same time, I will go to fucking jail for beating the brakes off of him if he want to be a little pussy boy and press charges on me. Yeah, that's that's the difference in mentality with people. You know, like people should know who they mess with if people have your mentality because I sense that. I sense that, that you're that type of guy that if we get an altercation and, and you know, you can you can call it social media all you want, like, oh, it's social media, that's silly, whatever. But social media is the new reputation. I mean, it's, it, it is communication. It's not like a... A, a, a child thing you know what i mean like when you talk on social media especially when you're an athlete and you're a brand and you're promoting yourself that's a huge deal and i think in my personal opinion I'm a, and i like darren yeah, as, as far as him as a fighter and and you know i think he's a good fighter and everything but i think what i heard that he said to you was probably a little too far and i think that you know and even if it is on social media that's that's being broadcast to the world so I mean, it's just as serious as saying it any other where or any other place. And in fact, it's worse because it goes to the media, it goes to the news sites, and then all of a sudden it's spread over everything. And I do get that sense, which I guess he might not, that you are that type of guy that, that when you see him, <laughs> you might just go up to him and clock him and, and not care. And nobody really wants to get punched in on the street. You know what I mean? Like it ain't, it ain't something that you look forward to. Like if I'm, if I'm like in a beef with you, it's like, you know, it doesn't matter who's the better fighter, me and you. I'm not going to do it if I think you're really going to punch me on the street. You know what I mean? Unless I'm really angry at you and like, I really want to fight you on the street too. So it's like, it's, it's kind of one of those situations where I think he's playing like it's a game and, and I can, I can tell that it's not for you. And, uh, it just seems and like he's spending fucking, a lot of time getting under skin. All these English do. I mean, cause he's, he's got a fan base, right? But it just, his fan base, the MMA fan base, or it's that, it's that European, it's those Irish fans they're just so vulgar and disgusting at the mouth. That's why they smoke cigarettes all day and their teeth are fucking dingy. Is they just got these disgusting fucking mouths and they act like shit ain't gonna happen to them. Well, you know, I don't... It, it's disgusting. They're showing their society to be disgusting with what they're talking about and what they're saying. And, and it's just, you know, we got more respect for ourselves uh, over here in America, I guess. Uh, and I just, I just, if I could just get my hands on, on that motherfucker, I mean, it's not going to change anything. People are going to say whatever they want, but they will never say it to my face. That's the point. And okay. So you can twist my buttons or try to get under my skin. I'm, they say that they, they, I'm paying rent or somebody's paying rent in somebody's head. Like, Apparently, I'm on y'all's minds. Y'all can't leave me alone. Y'all want to talk about me. Y'all want to hate on me so much. I went on Twitter yesterday. I said, I'm going to sell spots in my comment slots for a dollar for you to just come on and just comment hate shit because y'all ain't got nothing better to do and you're jealous of everybody else's lives because your life is shit. Well, why don't you get up and do something about it, you fucking bum? Get out of bed and go brush your teeth, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah, I can tell you're fired up over that, man. And then, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Well, I, I would like to see that fight, man. I honestly would. I'd like to see you guys meet at a reasonable weight where it doesn't put anyone at a disadvantage and actually have that fight. I would like to see that, man, because I, I could tell that that fire and that passion. Dude, I know I fought with passion, too, f for a different reason. But that passion is strong, man, when you get in there and you fight. And, and it can do dangerous things. So I think that could be an exciting fight in the future. Not looking past your fight now, obviously. you got a, you got a good fight coming up. But... I would definitely love to see that fight at, at one point. Well, I look forward to it. I look forward to this weekend. It's going to be a great time, great show. God, I'm just going to have so much fun with my with my baby girl, man. Yeah. And that's all I give a fuck about in life. Like, like <laughs> there's nothing else for me, bro. It's like I want to punch you in the face. I want to be with my girl. And until you make me want to punch you in the face, you know, and you know, that doesn't mean I'm a, I mean, I'm a fun guy, bro. You know what I mean? Like I know how to go out and have a good time. 
Shit, especially if there's alcohol involved, I'm trying to have a good time. But people always want to press buttons. They see you getting attention or clout or, you know, just they they don't feel the way that your persona shows you feel. And they want to make you mad. Like, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of hype right now. But, but they just never, ever do it in person because I'll fucking kill them, bro. Yeah, you have that. Yeah, I can sense that. So look, so so getting away from that a little bit, uh, just real fast. Um, you're 28 years old, man. You're young. You're getting into your prime. I feel. I, I think your late 20s, early 30s is your prime in MMA. What is it that you're looking to do? Like, what is your your number one goal? And obviously, everybody wants to be a champion. But what is it that your number one goal that you want to take from MMA in your career before you move on later on into something else? Like, what is it that you're looking to accomplish out of your MMA and your UFC career? I mean, I've always just wanted to be the baddest motherfucker around, bro. And and it's a legacy thing, you know. I've I've accomplished things like that I wanted to accomplish, and and at this point, it's like I want to be bad enough that I'm ready for anything in the street or in the octagon, and and um, that's gonna keep me safe, the people around me safe, and you know, the belt is on the goal list. Um, Great fights, great knockouts, making it to get in the pay-per-view money. That's enough money that's going to just take care of me for the, and my family for the rest of my life. And um, obviously leave big knockouts in that legacy that you're talking about. And, and, you know, get rich and take care of me and my girl. And also, like you said, to set up the opportunities after what could I do? What could I be? What could I promote? What could I have and make that people want? You know, like I said, if you could just pay me a dollar to comment hateful shit on my Twitter and Instagram, (laughs) who knows? I want, I want what I do, my success in the octagon to make me successful everywhere and anywhere. And I think what's brought me to where I am now is, even with a six and six record, I'm seen to be one of the more successful guys in the sport right now. And, um, especially in terms of attention. And if, if you're talking about fighting or if you're talking about a Mike Perry fight is a good chance. A lot of people are going to watch it. And, you know, that was, that was one of the goals. And now it's to just relax and, and, enjoy my life and this is a part of my life and i'm gonna enjoy it and i'm gonna stop taking it so dramatically and so seriously and just you know i'm just ready for everything and anything and i mean you can't beat me bro because i don't lose i really don't everything is great life is good food tastes good i got water to drink i have a soda from time to time i look damn good i'm (laughs) physically fit um, you know, my hair isn't too bad, and and my girlfriend is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So, ain't nothing gonna stop me, man. Do you have you thought at all about anything? I mean, obviously, you focus on your career now. Have you thought about anything that you would like to do later on in life, after after your UFC career is over with, or is, are you just focus 100% on fighting for now and you're going to worry about that kind of later on? Because I know you're a young man and, and you should be focused 100% on fighting right now, but sometimes there's always that one thing in the back of your mind, like, you know what, maybe once I get, you know, to the end of my career, this would be something I'd like to do or something I'd see myself doing in my 40s, for instance. I never needed anything but fighting, right? And um, that's all I've ever used and that can that can open so many doors like even this for you right now it's about fighting Mm -hmm. so you know I think it will just transition how it's supposed to something's gonna happen for me I told God you know I really don't want to do nothing and I want to get paid for it you know (laughs) so if I could just get that get up in the rankings to get a pay-per-view fight and make you know 16 million dollars then i'll be good i'll have i'll get a nice little million dollar boat and a nice little (laughs) two million dollar crib on the water with the boat in the back and we'll just be getting tan drinking my ties every day i'm going out like that (laughs) that's it bro good goals man 
That's good goals. Do you travel much, or do you? Hey, do you, you're doing it. You're in Thailand in the in paradise, ain't you? Yeah, bro. I, that's what I was gonna ask you about. Do you tr do you travel, or or if you don't, do you like traveling? Is that a big thing for you, or not? Not really. I did like traveling, but I'm, I, and then traveling showed me I was like I live in Florida. Florida's fucking dope. There's yeah. good food everywhere. The beach is right there. There's Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure. There's all these places to go and all these things to do right at home. I went to Thailand for a very, very short amount of time. Oh, you came? A couple days. It took two days. To, it took two days to get there, and then I was in Bangkok for two days. And Not enough time, I man. just didn't do it right. I didn't get to go to the beach and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's mostly seafood over there, isn't it? Well, down by where I'm in Phuket, it's an island. And, yeah, there's a lot of seafood down here. Yeah, see, I, I love some hamburgers and steak. And, <laughs> well, you, um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get the chicken, culture, man. man. So, so you were in Bangkok only, or, or did you move anywhere else? No, um, not really sure. We took a drive and we. But we around Bangkok, you, you didn't go to the islands the or anything. We went on the water and we're on these boats with like whole car motors, and they showed us around the shops on that water, and and we saw a couple of things all through Bangkok and. Ah. Uh, but it was a short trip, man. And I mean, I can't lie. I like America. When you get that fight bonus, you need to get Latori and, and bring her over to Phuket. And I'll show you AK Thailand and show you the islands and uh, and what it's like here, man. We got some great, great trainers, great Muay Thai program. We got a huge gym, two acres, it's two acre like compound of just multiple buildings. And and then we were right on an island, man. So we got like all the, the beautiful beaches and, and there's just islands all over the coast. Yeah. and. It's a good life, man. You you yeah, enjoy it for a nice little break. Thailand I'd like to go see. Yeah. I'd like to go see that side of Thailand. We we never know, but it sounds like that's something that could be on my list. I know we want to go to Bali. Yeah. And with you know, let's see what happens with the coronavirus and everything right now. Yeah, that's scary. Everything's still closed. Florida and Texas have been open, so I haven't really noticed. But everywhere else is closed, and you can't travel overseas, really. So, who knows, man? I feel like coronavirus is from global warming. <laughs> it's helping it. Hey, so you're you're in Texas right now? Yeah. Why are you in Texas? Because that's where I'm from. I'm from Houston, Texas. So I, I grew up a small-town Texas boy. So so why are you in Texas right now? Uh, this is where my girl lives. Okay. Cool. So I just moved here to be with her. And i just been doing my own thing. I mean, I didn't have nothing, no obligations anywhere to do. As a fighter, I fought to not have to do anything. And I, I just used to sit there every day, like, wondering what was missing. And now I don't do that anymore. I feel like I'm in the right place. And, like, I'm, it's just crazy. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, Texas is a cool place. So, so the coronavirus is not that big there as far as, like, you're not having to wear masks and, and, and quarantine and all that stuff? Well, it's, like, up and down, and then it was, like, making a comeback a couple weeks ago. It was, like, making a comeback. We were in Florida, and then there were some things with uh, the coronavirus, and then there was something that said the all the employees at the airport were – they all had corona. Oh, shit. And so, you know, I just got to make it to the fight next week, and I'll be straight. Give me, right before you go, man, give me a prediction on the fight with you and Mickey Gall. Like, what what, what do you say is going to happen? The round and how? I'm going to hit his ass. I'm going to hit his ass, and he ain't going to be able to take it. He's going to stop. I could flatten him out like Diego did. Uh, you know, I could beat him in that body lock if he tries to clinch. If he tries to shoot... If he gets on top, I'll get the sweep. I'll take his back. Uh, I'll probably stuff it all together. If he throws hands with me, if he opens up, I'm going to hit him for sure. And, you know, first round knockout, second round knockout, I see. I don't see it going past the second if he can make it to the second. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's like all your fights. So I'll be definitely watching, looking forward to it. Hey, look, Mike Swick, bro, it was a pleasure to meet you, man. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for listening to me. I know you got me hot on the Darren Till shit. People like that real shit, even though they a bunch of seem to be a bunch of fake motherfuckers out there. I feel the energy. Sorry for getting you all worked up over the Darren Till stuff. I just had to ask. 
It's been a pleasure for me to do this podcast with you, man. I wish you the best of luck. I'll be watching your fight on June 27th, and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you again after the fight. I appreciate a real, uh, you know, professional-headed mixed martial artist like you, man, giving me the time to talk. And I look forward to maybe one day coming out to Paquette and coming to see you guys at AKA. All right, take care. All right, well, there we go. Mike Perry, um, great conversation. You know, I've been wanting to talk to him for a while. Um, such a charismatic person and an individual in the sport of MMA. And, you know, I like watching his interviews as much as I like watching his fights. And it was good to be able to sit here and have an interview with him and talk to him and, and have a conversation. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it's going to be an interesting fight coming up here on June 27th and a week from now. I think it's going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, you know, obviously, Mickey Gall is going to be going for those takedowns and trying to get the submissions. And and uh, Mike Perry is going to be standing his ground, like he said, and throwing those punches. And when he says he's going to do that, he's not lying. I mean, he's not trying to, to fake a strategy. He's going to go out there and he's going to throw for the cheap seats. And, and it's going to be an entertaining fight. So can't wait to watch it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Leave us a comment. If you're listening on uh, audio platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, subscribe there as well. Let us know what you think. And uh, I appreciate the support. We'll see you next time.